Hi everyone, welcome to another video and um, this is gonna be a, a fall themed video so I have my sweater and a pumpkin is behind me so we're in October so for me I love fall um, when it's sunny <laughs> now it's raining at the moment so I uh, don't don't like this weather but um, next week it's gonna be better so I'm gonna enjoy it then um, and yeah I have my uh, pumpkin spice coffee here with me so um, it's gonna be a longer video I'm gonna talk about movie series this is gonna be a first this is going to be a first movie series on this channel and um, it's gonna be for a younger audience so if you're a little bit older if you're not interested in this topic that's perfectly fine um, you can watch it with your kids or you can skip it and watch something that's more appropriate for you but I think this I'm so sad because this um, movie series is kind of in my in my mind for everyone uh, every time when the fall comes and when the temperatures go down um, I just immediately think about Harry Potter so I have some books here behind me they're not I think one is missing because there is um, six books in total um, the last one uh, I actually read when I was 26 so during my college years and later I had no idea that like the series was continuing so I skipped the last one and then I think I read 700 pages in like two days um, to catch up so um, and it's amazing because this is uh, not just one movie it's a series so it keeps on giving if one year you prefer one movie from the series the next year you will prefer other ones so it's kind of always there for you and your family especially like I said during um, fall and, and winter as well so um, I'm gonna begin with my introduction to Harry Potter how how I started reading and watching the movies and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about the series and about JK Rowling who is the um, the creator of this whole new world that we get to enjoy right now. So I think my first book was given to me when I was 12. It was a gift where somebody recommended my parents to buy me uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So when it came out immediately I started reading. I was at that age so it, it's a similar age as the characters. So I could immediately immerse myself into this new world. And what I found interesting, so before that I was reading a lot of fantasy novels as well and watching a lot of fantasy films and cartoons. But this was the first time where I realized that this world kind of exists parallel to our world. So Harry Potter, you know, during the summer he lives in um, with his um, stepmother and stepfather. Um, and stepbrother Dudley um, in London and then uh, the rest of the year when he's at the school for witchcraft and wizardry um, Hogwarts he um, he is in this imaginary world so that we there is a parallel and um, that kind of opened our minds that it is possible to have your own imaginary world and it is perfectly fine if you don't enjoy going to school or if you um, don't en enjoy your current friends or you don't like the city where your parents moved you can always have your own sanctuary your own world and it's fine to live it live there so it kind of gave this uh, release to a lot of kids and they uh, sympathized with Harry Potter and they started following the whole the whole series so after the first book came the second one which is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and that's I think where the first movie came out so you would read the book in the beginning of the year and by Christmas you would have the movie there so you could kind of um, compare and see what, what 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 was missing in the movie from the book and like um, for me it was always very clear that they did such a good job at choosing the characters um, all of the characters, Harry Potter, Hermione, um, and Ron, uh, the magical three, they, the characters fit so well. They're very well described in the book. And I think uh, J.K. Rowling uh, was supervising the choice of, ca of the actors and the, the making of the characters and the sets and everything. So she made sure that everything was according to her vision. So that's why we, we get such a good interpretation of the books in the movie 
uh, after uh, the second one came the third one, which was uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I think this one is the most liked movie from all. Um, I think it's the one that uh, people rewatch the most. The fourth one is Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix. The fifth one, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And the last two are Deadly Hollows. Uh, there is part one and part two. For me, um, it's the ending of the series. It's when Harry Potter and uh, the whole crew is kind of older and um, the topics are a little bit more serious. So you could say that these two last two movies are for adults as well. If you if you think like the first movie is too kind of childish or you don't um, sympathize with the characters, then you would definitely find something for yourself in the last two Deadly Hollows. The underlying theme of Harry Potter is basically this world of magic and witchcraft and wizardry, which, um, so we have witches who are um, female and wizards who are male. And they have superpowers um, and they live in this parallel world where they can move objects and uh, with their mind and they use a wand and um, they kind of focus their energy on something and um, that thing does what they think. So this idea, I think it's very natural that it came from England because England is um, known to have like the history of Wicca or witches. So um, originally they were worshippers of nature and natural processes and they were harvesting different herbs and plants and doing all of these rituals in order to produce something. It was not something that was dangerous um, to anyone necessarily, but then you have a lot of branches of like white magic and black magic and all of that is represented in these books. So you get like the whole world that actually kind of exists, but it's very mystical. We don't know if, if, if it works or not. Uh, but it's very authentic to England. So that's why I like that the, the actual writer is also from that heritage. When it comes to J.K. Rowling, she actually had a very hard life during the time when she created Harry Potter. Uh, she was a single mother and uh, she was actually depressed, which is mind-blowing how in that state of um, sadness or depression she could create such a detailed world with all of these different... Um, themes and ideas. So each film has a diff completely different story. It's a new year at Hogwarts. Um, the adventures are new, they're new characters. So she really um, kind of, I think in one interview, she said that that was her escape. So she, every time when she would feel desperate or sad, or uh, sometimes she didn't have, she was homeless. She didn't have a place to write. She would go to a coffee shop and write there. And um, it, she would do a lot of research to, to these mythical creatures and beings and um, uh, spells. All of that was created from her mind. I guess she would like use different references um, and put them all into one puzzle that came out as Harry Potter and the world, the Potter world. <laughs> My favorite character from the whole series of course, Hermione, she is a, a bookworm. She's somebody who's like a loyal friend, very intelligent, uh, with good morals. Um, and she's a girl, so yeah. But um, definitely, I love Dumbledore. Dumbledore, for me, the director of the whole school, and um, he's the one who's orchestrating all the events around Harry Potter's life. So the actual story is that Harry Potter survived... A very powerful spell, a death spell that killed his parents. So there, of course, in this magical world, we have good and evil, the good wizards and the evil ones. And on the black throne sits uh, Lord Voldemort, who is um, this very powerful dark wizard um, who started out as uh, just a student in this Hogwarts school, but later on through his life, he became very evil and he found out how he could manipulate people with magic and um, he kind of had followers as well, people who were on the, on the dark side. And um, so Harry Potter's parents were killed by him. He also wanted to kill 
Harry Potter, but he couldn't because his mother left a mark on Harry Potter, a mark of love, and the love was too strong, so uh, Harry Potter survived. So throughout all of the movies, he's going to be the main character who is already predispositioned to be something in his life. He's already famous, people know him, students at Hogwarts know him. So um, that's kind of a good good starting point because you already know who to focus on. Even though he has these uh, magical powers and he potentially could be good or evil, uh, since a very young age in the first movie, uh, when he comes to Hogwarts, he decides that he's going to be on the good side. He kind of despises um, students who are um, kind of manipulative and on the evil side. And Hogwarts, you have... This is also amazing. Hogwarts was actually filmed in so many different locations. And uh, the one, the Great Hall, where everybody eats, is actually, I think, Oxford Library. Um, in England, but like the outside of, of Hogwarts was of course, of course, um, CGI uh, parts and some of the scenes were filmed like all over England. So um, it's just so magical. It's very well done. Hogwarts itself has many secrets. The school is kind of alive. You have pictures or uh, paintings actually that are alive, that move. You have like the staircases that change. You have the dungeons. And um, you have ghosts who are living in, in these castles. We have a lot of ghost stories coming from England. So this is so natural. Um, in Wales and Scotland, you have many haunted castles that even people visit today to kind of try to see ghosts or uh, feel their presence. So four different um, houses, as they say. So you have the Gryffindor house. I have no idea where she came up with these names, but it's amazing. So... The Gryffindor house, that is kind of the house of the brave and the good. The red house. You have Hufflepuff, that is uh, yellow. And it's more a house of the good and kind of people who are more inclined to nature and animals, I guess. And then you have Ravenclaw, which is um, blue. And it's the house of the intelligent. And then you have Slytherin, that's the evil house, the house of the snake, it's the greenhouse, and that's where the uh, the main enemies in school of Harry Potter go to, and they belong to actually this house. So um, it's a kind of a competition between these houses throughout all the movies. This uh, evil wizard is trying to get closer and closer to Harry and ultimately destroy him, um, and Harry, every time he, he wins with the help of, of his intelligence with help of his friends and many different circumstances that happen. Um, and of course, Dumbledore, he is his main ally. He wants good to win. He's like the white wizard. Um, and uh, he, he has his ways to reveal some secrets and to give some objects to Harry Potter and Ron and Hermione so that they can use them and defeat the, the evil. So in the first movie, uh, we get um, to see Harry as a baby, and we get to see their, uh, his step-parents, um, who are awful to him. So actually, um, Harry Potter's mother was, she knew that she was a witch from a very young age, but her family did not approve. So they sent her to the special school. How interesting is that? I mean, um, actually, we have to think about in real life, what does this special power mean? So some of the people who were re reviewing the whole series uh, said that maybe um, Harry Potter is actually a child with special abilities um, or uh, a child with disabilities. So they're, they're children who have a very rich imagination that are very uh, much separated from, from their families. They're not understood. They don't have the adequate school to go to. So maybe um, J.K. Rowling wanted to make this school for for those kids. In the first movie, this is the beginning of his uh, Hogwarts um, journey. So he goes to, he d discovers uh, this that there is actually a school that he belongs to. And um, he discovers that there is a, this whole other world that muggles or people who are, who are ordinary, normal, 
don't see. Uh, we see Diagon Alley, which is this beautiful street with a lot of shops where they get to buy all of their equipment for this new school. And then um, when he comes to Hogwarts, he's sorted into Gryffindor um, as well as Ron and Hermione. And um, he gets to meet the uh, Weasley family that is poor, but they're a very charming family. They have a lot of kids. They all go to Hogwarts and ultimately um, Harry will marry um, one of Ron's sisters. So he will stay within the family. And this family kind of ac accepted him first and he discovered some um, some things about how does a magical family function. And um, by the end of this first um, movie, he feels that he's in danger. He gets to kind of um, realize that there is this sorcerer's stone who gives eternal life and that this black wizard wants to own the stone. And so, but Harry wants to protect it. So in the end they clash and of course Harry wins. So this is his first drama and now he realizes that the world is not as safe as he imagined. So even though he is in this new school, he's still in danger. And then he has to go back uh, for the summer to his uh, step parents who are terrible. So um, in the second movie, uh, of course, we begin every t every movie begins with summer. So how is he spending his time? This time he's visited by Dobby. Dobby is a house elf, and uh, Dobby wants to stop him from going to Hogwarts because something bad is going to happen. And he does that actually, and um, he uh, the step father puts bars on Harry's window um, because he doesn't want him going to the school again and he doesn't want to see his friends and these creatures he's he's had it and um, but Ron and his brothers save him with a flying car so ultimately he comes to Hogwarts and um, they're, they're each year professors change there are new professors each year who teach a different subject who have potions you have a defense against the dark arts you have um divination ancient runes um levitation transfiguration there's so many i mean it's amazing how uh jk rowling thought about all of these subjects and um each subject is really uh well shown in the movie and you see actually what they study there you're with them in class and then um the second movie is called Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So the chamber, um, so Hogwarts has many secrets. And um, one of the chambers is deep, deep down below uh, Hogwarts because Hogwarts actually is surrounded by a beautiful lake. And um, underneath, um, in the basement, I guess, or even um, down at the sewage system, uh, there has been a chamber where a big snake lives. Um, and the snake was created by... Uh, the Black Wizard, and um, the idea is to release the snake and to kill all the students who are not um, magic-born, who are actually normal, but they have some magical powers, or I think who are not pure blood, as they say, so, with the help of one teacher who turns out to be a fraud, they get to this chamber, Ron, Hermione, and Harry, and in the end, Harry is the one who fights the snake. And he actually manages to um, destroy the snake. And again, he's winning. Um, Prisoner of Azkaban is the uh, third movie that I think is kind of the most diverse. We have many different magical things. So in the beginning, of course, it's summer. He gets into a fight with his um, step-parents. And he actually rides this magical bus that is invisible. So only witches and wizards can see this bus. And he rides the bus into um, Diagon Alley, and then um, there he is introduced with this um, new threat. This wizard who is crazy and who's on the loose um, is going to actually try to find him and kill him. He's like an old enemy of his parents. So he's again um, under a lot of stress. He doesn't know who to believe. Uh, when he comes to Hogwarts, um, people are kind of trying to protect him, especially the professors. Uh, there is Professor McGonagall. She is the head 
of the Gryffindor house and she's kind of an older lady and she's really worried. She's very attached to Harry. And um, but in the end, it turns out that this killer is actually he was a friend of um, Harry Potter's parents and he is his uncle and he wants to protect him. So um, in the end, it, it turns out that um, some people that you believed were right were actually the ones who were evil and the ones who were perceived as evil or were uh, marked as evil by others are actually good. So a lot of the things happen in the in the third movie, so you will have to watch it to get all the details. There is actually uh, one magical object that can um, make you travel in time, go back in time, so that's what they're using in the end. Um, then we have the... oh, I forgot actually that one. That is one... that may be my favorite, <laughs> sorry. Um, there's so many movies. Um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. That's the fourth one. Sorry, that's the fourth one. Why would this be my favorite? This is a movie where we are introduced uh, into this broad world of witchcraft and wizardry. So we get to see that there are other schools in the world from France and from Bulgaria in this case. And they're all coming to Hogwarts with different um, students to compete in the Triwizard Cup. This is a cup that each year, I think, one school, a student from one school actually wins the cup. And um, so by accident, Harry Potter is chosen um, again as a uh, trick to make him die in the end. So he's chosen to compete and the games are kind of deadly. So the first one you need to slay a dragon. The second one you need to kind of uh, breed underwater for an hour. Um, the third one you need to go into this maze and kind of find the end, but the maze is enchanted, so it's not that easy. And um, so we have Fleur Delacour, she is contestant from this French school. We have uh, a Bulgarian, uh, Victor Crum, who's also a Quidditch champion. Quidditch is a wizard, wizard football, or that's how I, I would describe it. Um, I don't have time now to talk about Quidditch, but um, it's a very special magical game and Harry Potter is very good at it. So, um, and then from, from Hogwarts we have uh, Cedric Diggory, who's actually a son of one of the people who works uh, at the ministry with Ron's father. And he is actually a good friend uh, of them. He's a very good guy. And then Harry Potter gets to compete as a fort the fort contestant by accident. And then in the end, it turns out that the cup that they are supposed to get is actually a port key. A port key is an object that makes you fly and go someplace else. So you teleport to a different place and they teleported to straight to this dark wizard, his backyard, basically. And um, in the end, unfortunately, Cedric Diggory dies uh, by this um, spell, which is uh, an evil, evil spell. So there are many, throughout the whole um, series, you get to learn many different spells, like uh, Lumos, which is when the light comes up, or, or Aleph Mora, which is like to open any lock. So you learn all of these. Um, I think these names are actually Latin. Harry Potter, of course, he goes through a big, big trauma. Um, he gained an uncle, but he lost um, a friend at Hogwarts. So uh, this is this was a huge um, tragedy that this uh, young, very good wizard um, died by accident. So um, the cup ends in a very dark mood. And then another um, another movie, Order of Phoenix, uh, begins again, with that notion that now this um, dark wizard is getting stronger and that he's recruiting more and more people and that Harry needs to be safe. So we are introduced to the, um, the special house that is the headquarters of the Order of Phoenix. That is kind of the opposition. Um, they are the good army and they're trying to uh, make a strategy to fight this um, black wizard. A lot of things that happen at the Order of Phoenix. I think um, there is a new teacher who's actually 
one of the spies from the ministry. She's um, Umbridge, I think is her name. Uh, she is um, not very fond of Harry Potter and um, any students in particular. So she wants to kind of make the school more rigid. She wants for students to uh, stop learning these spells that are going to be harmful for them. And then Harry Potter and his friends organize a very special class that he's going to teach now because he has experience in fighting with uh, black forces, dark forces. A lot of his friends attend and they learn how to fight. Uh, they learn actually how to defend themselves against these uh, dark spells and things. Half-Blood Prince is actually one of the professors. I have to give a spoiler, so it's um, Snape. Snape is uh, the professor that they least like, but in the end it turns out that he was the one who was in love with Harry Potter's mother and that he, throughout this whole time, uh, actually wanted to protect Harry. But he is kind of very well made as a character, as a dark wizard as well, and you would think that he would belong to the dark side, but uh, in the end it turns out that... Uh, so in the Half-Blood Prince... Uh, we get to see again a new professor, Professor Slughorn. He teaches potions and he is the one who's kind of uh, keeping a record of all the excellent students at Hogwarts. Um, he makes parties and he likes to kind of have them all in one place. So of course Harry is invited, but there is a um, very special meaning why Professor Slughorn is at Hogwarts in that year. And that's because he knew the Dark Wizard very well. He knew uh, Tom Riddle, as it's that's the full name of of the Dark Wizard, and um, Dumbledore wants to find out something from the past um, of of this wizard, and there is actually a technique to in magical world to extract your thoughts and memories and to put them in these kind of small jars, and um, you can rewatch them later, <laughs> so um, you don't have to store them in your brain. So that's an, an amazing trick. Um, and um, this Professor Slughorn, his memory is very valuable to Dumbledore. Uh, but in the end, sadly, uh, there is an imposter uh, at Hogwarts who is like the main nemesis of Harry Potter, and that is Malfoy. I have no idea why I didn't mention him in, in the beginning. So throughout the whole series, there is a student of the same year. Um, he goes to Slytherin. And um, he is kind of the rival of Harry and they, they fight. He's kind of a coward a little bit, but um, he's a, a, a good enough enemy to Harry and he really is troubling. So by the end, he is given a task to kill Dumbledore. And that actually happens in the end. Um, not, not him, but I think, I'm not sure like who actually kills Dumbledore, but he's thrown from... Uh, one of the towers at Hogwarts and he dies. So again, the um, and Harry Potter could not do anything. As a character, Harry has many uh, contradictions. So he's fighting the bad, he's trying to be good, but he has all of these visions and traumas from childhood. His brain is not light. He has a lot of things on his mind at all times and um, he has a lot of guilt. Um, for everything that happens and he has a lot of questions as to why his parents are dead why did he grow up in in a hostile environment why did his step parents didn't like him um, so but as as um, we see in the series as he gets older he becomes more confident in fighting the evil that's his one purpose um, and trying to stay normal as well like trying to to be on the good side. And then the Dudley Hollows is actually one book, but it's made into two movies. I think it's a good idea because, again, a lot of this, this book has like 800 pages. So we begin with the notion that now the white wizard has died and now the dark can spread and these um, evil wizards are kind of um, on the loose and they are starting a war. And Hogwarts is not safe anymore, so um, Harry, uh, Ron, and Hermione decide to go on a quest to find these Deadly Hollows. And Deadly Hollows are actually objects that uh, contain part of the Dark Wizard's soul. So the way Dark Wizard thought was best to keep 
himself alive is to separate his soul into pieces and hide those pieces so the person who finds all of those pieces can definitely kill him in the end, which is very hard. And um, there's also a special way to destroy these objects, so you cannot just uh, destroy them in any way. So Harry has quite a task, and um, this is something that Dumbledore left him. He counts on him, in a way, to finish this war. And um, we we see... I think the, mo the first Deadly Hollows begins with the wedding, so... Um, Ron's brother gets married and that mm, wedding gets hijacked again by um, by this um, news that now we are in danger and that everybody needs to go to a safe place because you can get um, arrested or killed at any time. So we see beautiful location, locations across England um, where different wizards live. So we see a village where Harry Potter was born. We go there. Uh, we see um, a house where Luna Lovegood, one of the Gryffindor students, lives with her father. It's a very interesting place, a very, very good animation, and they, they did a good job at portraying um, how, how does like a typical uh, magical house looks like. <laughs> and then we get to see forests and lakes deadly hollows number two that's where uh the dark wizard actually realizes that he is um that maybe deadly hollows are actually going to be destroyed and that he's going to be destroyed so he's scared and now um this is where the real war happens it's a very sad ending um so i'm not going to reveal a lot it's the ending of the whole series so Actually, Hogwarts uh, becomes a fortress and they fight and some of the um, characters actually die. Uh, but in the end, um, the good wins and Harry Potter um, and Ron and Hermione, Ron and Hermione are actually married. <laughs> they get to be in love and they get married and then um, Harry marries Ginny, which is Ron's sister. And they have children and now... Um, this is a whole other chapter for these young witches and wizards who are gonna start Hogwarts the same way as um, Harry, Ron, and Hermione did in the past. So um, it's a kind of a full circle. So again, like each movie has different themes, different locations, different spells, different characters. So it's um, up to you to choose. Uh, but a lot of the a lot of the scenes are actually that's my impression are shot in the fall and winter it has that kind of like Christmassy vibe and Halloween of course is related to ghosts and witches and wizards and all of that so um, that's why it's appropriate but also just the whole the music as well the atmosphere is very much um, for this season I forgot to mention so yeah um, out from outside of Hogwarts there is um, a village called Hogsmeade Hogsmeade is beautiful. I think now, actually, there is a Harry Potter world in um, Orlando, in Florida, and you can visit Hogwarts. You can go to Diagon Alley. You can go to the to Hogsmeade, actually. And um, there is a, a lot of these um, restaurants and coffee shops, uh, magical coffee shops. How how can I say? And um, actually, there is a menu that you can try and eat everything that because. At the beginning of each year, they have a big feast at Hogwarts, so they eat like, pumpkin pies and apple pies, and they eat like, um, mashed potatoes and, and turkey with gravy and all these beautiful recipes. So there's actually, I think, a Harry Potter cookbook as well, so you can cook and prepare these dishes. But there is also a one famous drink that is butterbeer. To this day, I don't know how to make butterbeer, but it's actually a mixture of like ginger ale and condensed milk I guess with like ice cream and like caramel sauce I'm not really sure but I definitely should go and try butterbeer <laughs> that would be like my ultimate goal when it comes to these series and um, there are many people who actually collect um, I'm not I, I really enjoy Harry Potter but I, I'm not a huge fanatic but there are people who just enjoy collecting um, objects from from these movies the um, capes with um, 
with the house logo or like the wands or um, objects from Quidditch. Some of the themes from from these movies and books are definitely um, love and uh, family, friends, uh, being good, being kind, um, just having your close close ones with you, being loyal, being uh, brave at the same time, being uh, persistent, not despair, um, there is a chance for everyone, it kind of is all-inclusive um, and in that sense there are a lot of themes that that are good for kids and for for anyone basically who watches it, it's always like a positive notion in the end, but um, there has been a lot of debate about uh, considering religion, so kids who are raised religious, they're introduced with these magical spells and that is not necessarily something that um, religious families approve so this is kind of um, the opposite of the bible because you get a lot of uh, themes of wicca and um, a lot of supernatural powers a lot of powers that are outside of this world there's no one nowhere that god is mentioned uh, but in that sense, I think that shouldn't be an obstacle for you as a religious person to watch the movies or read the books because it's a fantasy world. There are definitely some things that you will um, find interesting um, and, and ultimately you're going to have fun just watching these adventures. So I don't think it should be that serious. More importantly, um, the, the idea of inclusivity and having kids who who are different feel accepted that's i think one of the best things that we can draw from from the series as well so you can talk about many things when it comes to harry potter of course with with your family and friends that that have watched it what is your favorite spell what is your favorite potion what is your favorite location um what is your favorite hogwarts house um favorite characters, favorite animals. Um, now I forgot to mention that, but actually Harry Potter has sequel or prequel um, to movies Fantastic Beasts that were done by Americans. So Warner Brothers, they decided to um, continue this series of, of magic and um, Fantastic Beasts are the events that happen way before Harry was born, and uh, we get to see a lot of magical creatures uh, in these two films. So I'm not going to talk about them here, but I'm sure you've heard, and you can watch that as well. That's uh, considered to be a continuation of uh, Harry Potter series as well. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed thinking about Harry Potter and just remembering all the details. Um, it's impossible just in, in half an hour to talk about all these movies, but I try to do my best and kind of to um, visualize and introduce some of the uh, the themes from, from the movies. Um, I think the movies were directed by different directors. I think Chris Columbus was the first one and then as uh, the series went on, all direct directors are good in terms of um, the... Col I think it's one of the series where you cannot really tell where uh, the animation begins and the reality ends or vice versa it's um if if i was not told that hogwarts does not really exist i would thought that was like a castle in england that they found um so everything is really realistic it's very well made costumes are amazing uh costume design throughout the whole series i um it's just so authentic uh and new at the same time so it you you can definitely feel that it fits there they're not overly dressed it it's just kind of fits that um, universal narrative because we don't actually know when Harry Potter takes place. So if you say like in the 90s, like is that like fashion that, that is um, um, from the 90s or is it 2000s? Uh, it's universal. So um, the characters are kind of dressed in that way. But then again, like the magic fashion or the fashion in, in the magical world is also very different. They all have capes. It's very much authentic to the stories that we've seen and read before. And to wrap up, write me in the comments which movie 
from the series do you like the most? Like I said, for me, it's the Goblet of Fire or Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm -hmm. I don't know really. <laughs> They're all good. Subscribe and um, keep on watching movies, reading books, keep on studying English, and I will see you in the next fall video. We will see what the topic is going to be. I cannot decide right now, but I'm so glad that I did Harry Potter. So anyway, <laughs> see you soon in the next one. Bye!